dog has quieted. Yes. So, this is good timing. <laughs> yeah. So here we are. Speaking of timing, my how time flies. Yeah, I know. Here we are. Welcome to the VD Clinic, the third anniversary commentary. Yay! <laughs> With you, as always, I'm Vanessa, and here is Darren. Yes. We are still in quarantine, as we were last... Or were we last month? Or did we yeah, yes, and the month of... Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was going to say, and the month before... Because, yeah. <laughs> see, I'm so confused because it was March Madness, but we ended up recording it in April. I yeah. forget what, and nobody's schedule aligned until, that's why I'm confused. I've been yeah. thinking that we recorded an extra quarantine episode, but we didn't. No, but we, we did record March Madness in quarantine, and we had already scheduled it when things were starting to tighten up and uh, I was supposed to go down to Florida right before uh, St. Patrick's Day. Not because of St. Patrick's Day, but that's an easy point in the calendar to reference. I think the day after I canceled our flights, uh, the states, well, Florida didn't, but my state was closing everything up. So I'm not going to go down to spring break central where everything's open. I'm going to hunker down in the bunker. I did not go out to a cabin in the woods, though. Yes, absolutely. This is our uh... no Stephen King this year. <laughs> no, we, we figured if we didn't at least skip one year, it would become, well, it has to always be that. Yeah. Well, and I mean... This is something that's fun, but, uh, yeah, different kind of fun. Um, and actually, we've both seen this before, so. We we have. And... It won't be like someone hasn't seen it. True, true. But that's always more of a gamble. This is. Um, yeah. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Three is a good. Three is a very powerful number. Three is my favorite number. It pops up a lot in my life. Um, yeah, same for me course i was born in march so you know ah. you get into the numerology shit yeah <laughs> yeah i might have just been brainwashed by my by my uncle who uh three was my my first baseball number and i don't know he told me a million times was there you know babe ruth had that number and so that could have just got driven into my brain but it really has popped up <laughs> <laughs> and now that's all I'm going to think of. Speaking of babes, well, I don't know if you noticed, but Chris Hemsworth is very handsome. In I, was, I was I was going to say um, when we start the movie, I was going to say he's dreamy because do you remember when that was a thing? What like when right around the time this came out, like he was like everybody was just was so like a buzz about like how hot they thought he was <laughs> just and I feel like this was before Thor, or was this after? Yeah, it was before. So yeah, he was he was on the rise, and yeah. But anyway, I'm it's sure not we can... you don't still hear it, but it was like all of a sudden, like you just heard it every everywhere. It was ridiculous. Yeah, so he's. I, oh, well, other than our, you know, the director and uh, the character of the director and, uh, you know, our our favorite guy, Bradley Wait. Whitford. Uh, we'll, we'll save that for for the for the commentary and stuff. So we, we've got some, you know, some, hmm? I'm, look, I'm sorry. We may be mistaken. I don't know. Cabin in the Woods came out the same year as Thor. I didn't okay. realize Thor was that old. Open. Out on IMDb, Thor is listed right before Cabin in the Woods. Okay. So I don't know if that means like when they were released during the year. Hmm. So yes, Cabin in the Woods is came out in 2011. Okay. So luckily this was not a uh, Matthew McConaughey, Texas Chainsaw, Next Generation situation where... 
Thor recorded a really or uh, filmed a really cool horror movie before he got super duper famous. <laughs> Although I hear McConaughey uh, just sort of shrugs it off. I think uh, what's what's her face, Renee Zellweger, kind of tries to mm-hmm. delete it every oh, time she it just... shows up on her IMDb. Yeah, she does. But, you know, A uh, Cabin in the Woods is isolation. It's a commentary, so spoiler alert. There's many spoiler alerts. But, uh, you know, there's end times and angry gods. and uh... You know, and, and honestly, I, I'm i trying to think. I've maybe seen this twice, and that's it. And it's been ages since I've seen it, so... It will almost be like I'm seeing a new movie. <laughs> but um, now that I think about it, because I'm like, yeah, I I basically, I got it. I saw it in the theater, and then I got it when it, I got it on Blu-ray, like, and saw it right away, and then I haven't seen it then, since then, and that's been however long, so, okay. yeah. So I've seen it a couple more times than you have, but I, I also saw it in the theater. Amanda and I were dating at the time. We went and saw it, and we usually try to go see movies at either Studio 35 or The Gateway. They're the more independent mm-hmm. theaters. Uh, right. One's in the neighborhood and one's down on campus, but we went to an AMC to see this one, and whatever the fucking cheesy bar- name of the bar that AMC theaters had is like MacGuffin's or something like yeah. that was right next to the door to the theater. So it was really easy for somebody to just run out and get a drink or get a couple drinks and bring it in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we were very quiet and respectful. Yeah. I, I recall of getting course. quite drunk. Of course. But anyway, I'm more like Marty tonight. How are you? What's going on? I am just dandy. I'm uh, doing my best not to go stir crazy. Cabin fever, as you would say. Cabin fever, yeah. No, we are not covering that movie, thank you. We are covering a better movie. So, um, is there anything else you want to say before we get to the movie? Because I was going to say, we'll take a quick break before we start the movie. But yeah. Um, Take Yeah, that quick break, and maybe that dog will end its argument. And uh, we will be right back with our traditional semi-sober anniversary commentary, The Cabin in the Woods. This is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar. For those who are directly affected by recent events, and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com, on our Facebook group page, or on Twitter, at legionpodcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon. And we're back. Yes, we are. We have, we, we each have our, the movie queued up. Um, what did we decide? It's like we've gone through the very opening credit and we're now to the point where the screen says Lionsgate and the production company logo. So that's what, 13502 we decided? Yeah. Thereabouts? Thereabouts. The, there have not been the uh, 
ancient scroll title credits yet. Okay, see, right. you, you know the movie more than I do. Okay, so now we're going to hit play in three, two, one. All right. So, yeah. We both saw now we have theater. the scroll. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Zora? <laughs> Should they knock your mic over, or...? Knocking my entire table and Mike and me trying to sit back down. Uh... Yeah. So did, uh, read the next uh, credit that pops up on your screen. Oh, wait. So, a I, much younger Bradley Whitford. And, and Richard Jenkins. They're a great combo. I wonder if he's going to show up on... Oh, he wouldn't. Well, I don't know. But just because we thought of it right now, it made me wonder if he was going to show up on next season of Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale, at least. <laughs> <laughs> obviously everybody's thinking that of course of course so you know it's like who do you think it what i don't remember about this and maybe i should just go with it and um uh, experience the movie and remind myself as it comes along um is the corporate is not a corporation or is it a government facility or do we know that's um, what i can't remember or is it left to your imagination that's what i you know it, it's it's hard to say because it's um a regular normal world based around the idea that there are these ancient gods mm -hmm. that if you do not appease them uh, you know, shit's gonna get real. Uh, right. <laughs> the cabin in the woods. Uh. So it's it's hard to tell. You know, if it if it's the usual structure, you would think that this would have to be connected with the government in some way, or else well, they wouldn't yeah. have the tech and the freedom to do that's, this shit. That's totally what I'm thinking. Yeah. Also, I've been watching. Okay, quarantine has brought Vanessa list like watching or at least rewatching a lot of ancient aliens. Oh, really? <laughs> and government conspiracy shows. I mean, it's stuff that I watch or read here and there before anyway. Just okay, out of curiosity, and it's humorous to some extent. But there's also I'm a nugget of truth. I believe in some of it, but. I've, it just when you inundate yourself with it, yeah, it's just, it's it's hysterical. It's been making me laugh a lot. I, I, I started <laughs> now thinking there's government conspiracies everywhere. <laughs> it, it, it's it's too big. It's too big of a a, a setup. I just uh, we're yeah, everybody that you know, you know we're gonna go off on our tangents. That's how we do, but. I just started right. listening to a podcast that this guy who uh, is a reporter in D.C. Mm -hmm. is investigating a story that he was told at a government cocktail party that the CIA wrote uh, the Wind of Change song. Yeah. And it's a you know, short series of him investigating it, uh, you know, talking to people that were in the CIA or you know, still are, but say they're not or whatever, but other things, but yeah, uh, they, <laughs> or, you know, if, you know, we, we try to keep it a little less political over here, but, uh, then, you know, 
we sort of get on psycho semantic but that's the government sacrificing people to keep shit going yeah yeah So we have the whole setup here with the movie. They're getting ready to go to a cabin in the woods. Do do do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, there's college it's... students <laughs> for a weekend, and there's always the the, the bookish one. Yeah, and the the hero, the what the hero, the fool, the. things but I'm, I'm trying not to give yeah. too much away because you you don't remember the specifics of the movie i remember a lot but there are gaps i remember when shit hits the fan mm. <laughs> yeah because you all and you have to have the stoner dude yeah but he's the smart one. He is. But yeah, they're they're all types, but they play against type. But I, I type, like how, how right. they play with that in the in the movie that it's manipulate uh, manipulatable. Is that a word? It can be um, manipulated. Yeah. Yeah. Bong in your brother's van? What are you stoned? I've probably I seen love this movie that... in the last year. I love that his luggage is just like a paper bag. Yeah. And he has a he has he has a messenger bag and just a paper like grocery bag and that's his like luggage. And he's like, Okay, I'm ready. Yep. Nope. Keeping it simple. <laughs> gonna be comfortable and then they sort of remind you that you're in a um an orchestrated world with the right the code the operative and, yeah the nest is empty we got the harbinger coming up yeah yeah cell phone reception <laughs> where was it that people were burning down 5g towers oh i forget but isn't woody harrelson part of that conspiracy he seems to like he I... was saying something about it and like it got a few people riled up and were they were doing it yeah he not saying <laughs> the cause of it but i think he was, he was along the lines of um there might be something to that, but I, I don't think he's uh, John Voight or James No. Woods. Oh, no. Or John Cusack. I know John Cusack's or, thrown off a couple. What? Or Richard Belzer. <laughs> oh, I read a Richard Belzer book about conspiracies yeah he started going way off the deep end like getting to a point where it was bad you're just like oh no you your your conspiracy theories are misguided now <laughs> I, they yeah. were logical before. They were logical before. Now, <laughs> they're all, they, they're not, they're illogical and they're dangerous. <laughs> I, I like how, uh, this is, this is like a popcorn horror movie. It totally is. And, I mean, I can't really tell you all the, Stuff he's done, but uh, I liked almost all of the Buffy series. Speaking of Joss Whedon. Yeah. 
I rage quit after a, cer- a person died, and I, I haven't seen the rest. But I still have not seen the entire Buffy series, but it's one of those that's like on the list, you know. Um, well, you know it's on it's on Hulu, if if uh, if you find, oh, yeah. if you find yourself stuck at home. Oh, I know. It's on the list. There are so many things that are on the list. You know, that's that's part of the problem. <laughs> I don't know why I remembered this character being played by Michael Berryman. It could have. It totally could have. <laughs> oh, but... totally. You're right. You're right. What is that actor's name? I need to... I can't see. Who, the Harbinger? Yeah. Uh, Tim Desarn. He plays Mordecai. What um, else is he in? He was also in Three Fugitives, that uh, Martin Short movie. He was in Fight Club, Demon Knight, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning, uh, Project Dorothy from last year, uh, Quantum Leap. (laughs) <laughs> Dr. Quinn, Star Trek, Next Gen, Voyager, NYPD Blue. Yeah, he's just one of those he's guys. That's... Deep, yeah, Deep Space Nine, Prison Break Monk, Sons of Anarchy. He's fucking justified. Yeah, a pretty wide variety of character work. <laughs> the railroad's coming through. The, the dirt bike on the back. I don't know why, but it's just like why? Just it. I don't need it. It like. <laughs> oh, cause. Yeah, you need. That it just for strikes that one. me as odd. <clears throat> yeah, cause I don't think anywhere around the property there's anything that you could really. I mean, well, I guess why if would there's you... a bunch of woods. You could go dirt biking in the woods, but. That's an easy way to wreck. <laughs> but there's only one dirt bike. Like, you know, you would think a couple people might want a dirt bike together or something. No, no. Yeah, well, you know, it's it's probably But Thor's. you're right, there's not the space in the in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> you can ride around the house. That makes me think like... so Hunger Games, that <laughs> that whole like that way that they do that scene. I just it always makes me think of Hunger Games. Yeah. It's probably around the same time. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The first Hunger Games, though, I think... I'm... It came out a while ago. But you're right. Maybe they are around the same time. God, I couldn't even remember that Thor came out as long ago as this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the Hunger Games came out the same month as Cabin in the Woods. Okay. Well, it is entirely possible I saw Hunger Games first. I don't remember which I saw. Amanda read the books, so we usually went and saw the movies pretty pretty yeah. soon. Like Hunger Games, and she went through her Twilight uh, phase. She still likes the movies, but she read all the books and the movies all came around, came out around her birthday. But mm-hmm. whenever we watch them now, we do it with, with, uh, the riff tracks. Uh, the, do you know riff tracks? Yeah. Okay. And I don't really no, the twi- like... the twilight movies I saw just to say I'd seen uh-huh. and I just, and I, because I already knew I was going to be ripping on them. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Hunger Games, I actually like, <laughs> for the most part. There are some parts of it where you're just like, oh, 
But I do love like the costume design and some of that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, there's some. Cool but stuff. you know, you know, I like my dystopian future type stuff. Yeah, I still kind of find it hard to believe that she'd never heard of Battle Royale, but yeah, okay. I agree. Uh, but yeah, I, I like I like more of that than. Uh, the, tw the the Twilight movies, but I am a completist. I I, I saw yeah. the last movie and I thought that twist at the end was some bullshit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I quite like Cabin in the Woods. Uh, I've I've tossed it on many a time. Uh, sometimes I'll it'll no be in the back when I'm doing a. Uh, like uh, editing an episode or something. Mm -hmm. I like it quite a bit too, but I just, for some reason, haven't seen it a lot. I don't yeah. know. Okay, so he just found the one-way mirror. <laughs> this is the pioneer times. People had to construct their own interrogation rooms. Yeah. It's Law and Order, SVU. Dun dun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't even like hearing that. <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of feel like you can you can tell that horror the horror fans mm -hmm. made the movie. Yeah. Um. Every time I watch it, I try to find another reference because I feel like piled in there. Oh, definitely. It's a film just full of Easter eggs. times i yeah well we'll we'll get to that you know it's kind of just cheesy enough to have that older right feel. no absolutely i like how they cut back and forth between here and mission control or whatever that place yeah. would be called <laughs> yeah so um well we're getting this peep show mm -hmm. um but that is an awfully disturbing piece of art. And I like disturbing art, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, I wonder where those ended up. Whose house. Right. Yeah. And now cut back to mission control. What's his name again? Which one? Uh, the We Are Live guy. The one that's not Bradley Whitford. Oh, Richard Jenkins? Yeah, yeah. It's... Now, see, that's it's kind of weird. With the mm -hmm. Sexual harassment. Right. I think we might be a couple seconds off. Uh, tell me, tell me what you're seeing. It's the chem department. I believe it's uh, control. Yeah, go ahead. You have Harbinger on line two. I'm reading the subtitles. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
Okay. I think we're close. Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> I always go back to the Hebrew hammer with that name. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you love your mother? <laughs> Am I on speakerphone? Yeah. No, absolutely not. Of course. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> I can hear the echo. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like a office this, this could be an office space or something no it, absolutely no the way they toy with each other it, it's just like any stupid bullshit you know corporate office yeah you gotta come like you said office space yeah that's absolutely Everywhere, everybody I ever hear talk about this movie always points out that they had Marty keep on his clothes and have the towel draped over mm -hmm. him because he was yeah as fit as everybody else. They wanted him to be more of the shaggy stoner. Yeah. But I don't know if that's just everybody read it on IMDb. I like most of the Thor movies, but Thor Ragnarok is probably my favorite. I haven't seen all of them, but I did like Thor Ragnarok a lot. I just want to see a mermaid. We should talk Aquaman. Oh, and the whiteboard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you laughing at me or the movie? A little bit of both. Okay. <laughs> Sound effects for the movie. <laughs> probably prefer that than uh, for with this movie this isn't a movie that I usually like drink to this is definitely a movie I get high to yeah uh, oh yes. certainly another movie we almost did or was under consideration but idle hands yeah That's a fun one, too. The dog is angry. I know. And the dog didn't start until right before we started recording. I don't think I've ever heard that dog before. It's every once in a while, I'll hear a dog down the the. I was going to say die, down the aisle, but down the <laughs> hall. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, Is that your Southern? Do you call halls aisles in the South? No, I don't know why I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking. It was just a word that popped into my head before <laughs> hall. <laughs> in my mouth, didn't want to cooperate in it. I do love the way they're cut. They cut back and forth between this and Mission Control, where they're like, you know, those guys are like up there. They've all been like betting and they're like dancing and everything. Like, ah, ha ha, we're gonna make all this stuff happen. Yeah, they've got the chemicals in her hair dye. 
And they even knew that she was going to dye her hair somehow. Yeah. Extra creepy. But, you know, I wonder if... <laughs> uh, like how long it goes into selecting the people and getting them ready. Right. feel like this might have been an audition part <laughs> like an easy thing to like okay come in and read yeah. this this scene yeah hopefully joss whedon wasn't wearing a wolf mask like uh mark duplass and creep right <laughs> peach fuzz I think the first time I saw this, I actually wondered if the wolf was going to bite her. <laughs> I should have known better because of the uh, outside controllers thing. Yeah. Wouldn't have a animatronic wolf head, <laughs> but, you know. It still wasn't predictable at this point in the movie to me yet. I had no idea where they were going to take me. Oh, but now he's becoming Dark Thor. Yeah. Because of the, what, douchebag pills they put in the beer or something? <laughs> <laughs> that always <laughs> makes me think of Evil Dead. <laughs> Sunny time, there's a cabin in the woods and like a cellar door like that. <laughs> yeah. It's just screaming Evil Dead to me. <laughs> and there's gonna be all the other, all the other references down in there. Yeah. Did you like playing Truth or Dare? Did you ever play Truth and Dare? Truth, yeah, Truth I did. Dare? Yeah. But I was always boring. Because I'd say truth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but truth is a good call people. if you're shameless and practical. I, I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> they will, for the most part. But, <laughs> you know, yeah. It's, if if you're not ashamed like, of anything you've done, you don't have to I'm do like, anything stupid. Yeah, I'm like I'll tell you. Lanterns. And Tom Savini's basement. Yeah. Or K and B K and B maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the Warrens. <laughs> Their fake <big> museum. <laughs> 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 oh, the conch shell. You're so close. <laughs> you don't need to open that. I mean, you didn't. You don't need to be down there, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I would have been so creeped out to go into that basement. I would not look at the what was on the film. No. <laughs> Just no. It's a big fat no all around to me. Music box in the basement in the dark. That's just asking for trouble. Although they are all drugged. Yeah. So it's, I don't know. It's, <laughs> they keep saying everything box? has to be free will, but you know, they, they drugged her hair dye and pump pheromones and stuff around. So it's, Don't say it out loud. You don't need to. That no nothing nothing good ever comes of that. I I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> I don't care if it's the Necronomicon or Anne Frank's diary. Nothing good can come of reading it out loud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> Draw, draw the spoken, line at the spoken Latin. word. Spoken words have mojo. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I'd know. like I, I'd like to think I would be the practical person in this situation and just be telling everybody to stop it, and you know. We're all coming back upstairs, and it's the end of it. <laughs> yeah, we still got beer to drink, and okay, it's your turn for truth or dare. Uh, but uh, you know, Bradley Whitford and the chem department <laughs> drawing line at the fucking Latin. Yeah, do not read the Latin. I took Latin. I can tell you that. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. Don't read the Latin. <laughs> Some of the women. No, no. But I guess that's also the point. It's what I know. This would probably be a good uh, double feature with you know Scream. Mm-hmm. Which was what four. Three, three or four years earlier. Scream? Yeah. Was that 99 that was the 90... or 98 or something? No, that was... that was thought that was closer to like 96, 97. Okay. I think 96. So about eight years earlier. Oh, the Buckners... No, it was closer to 15 years earlier. Was it? Am I off with my map? I, I won't check your math. I'll believe you. If this came out in 2011, and, and that well, was like closer to 96. Okay. So <laughs> 10 years would make it 2006, Zombie and then another... Weird. Five makes it 2011. So I actually, okay, I did math correctly. <laughs> Huzzah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I, I will rarely question. Screams older, than you, screams older than you think. That's the crazy thing about it. Yeah, for some reason I pictured it as being 98 or 97. I think maybe Scream... Two came out around that time. My my high school Wait. years were a blur. Uh, I think Scream came <laughs> out. Scream came out like my freshman year. Um. Yeah. So, <laughs> I I don't think I saw it in the theater. I I almost definitely saw it on VHS or DVD release. Whatever it was. Mm -hmm. So do you think these other countries are supposed to represent other horror movies that uh, that happened? Anything specifically or just 
style based on country? Um, I think it could be movies happening in other countries. Okay. And they're just inspired by their styles, maybe. It's like it came up uh, last last summer during the uh, podcast under the Seer, uh, under the stairs summer series. Mm-hmm. Uh, when talking about uh, disturbing behavior, wait, is that the name of that movie or the faculty? Talking about the faculty, yeah. And that was the year that they said earlier in this movie that that was the last time there was a fuck up, and it was the chem department. So yeah, we were talking about uh, the drugs that they were using to fight the aliens and the faculty. <laughs> Right. So that was the running theory that it was referencing that movie, but I haven't really thought about the other places. Well, and you know, here's the thing about this. They're all relatively smart, book smart wise. Well, yeah, and I think uh, that's Marty, something... Marty's getting ready to say something about that. I think. You know, it's not like whereas a lot of these kind of movies, you have a group of friends, but they're all, but they're not all like. One may have book smarts, but not any common sense. And another has all this common sense, but no book smarts Mm -hmm. or something. You know, it's a real, like, or they just have people who are completely, you know, stupid on both sides. I mean, like... (laughs) They're more multi-dimensional in this movie than other movies. Oh yeah. I, Even I, though they represent this the quote unquote stereotypes. Yeah, and I am I, um, I, I just remember a line from later in the movie that I'll try to point out when when it's said that lines up mm-hmm. with that about being more fleshed out characters that are a stereotype. I heard a popping sound. Are you still there? Oh, no, that's not what that was. That was my cat assaulting my water. Oh, okay. I had I had to mute the mic. This Because you're going to hear it again in a minute. Because Zora insists on stealing my water. And loudly drinking it. <laughs> this is my life. I don't need a child. I have a cat. <laughs> yeah, I have a asshole cat that'll just walk up and put her paw in your drink to to get a taste or uh yeah so the only good thing i can say is at least zora doesn't do this to other people only me <laughs> i guess that's love <laughs> that's yeah i'm mom <laughs> Yeah, I think that's why I call it Mission Control, that shot. Yeah. Well, the entire way it's set up is completely Mission Control. Yeah. And... (laughs) And... This is really Hunger Games. Uh, Now that you say that, they've got the the places to pump out the drugs and the fog right right by except everybody. without except without stanley chuchi yeah to to be a narrator very much less interesting facial hair in this movie um, right 
zero. No purple wigs. Yeah. No purple wigs like Elizabeth Banks. <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor. You know, I was always posting one of those uh, every time there was a firing out of the Trump administration, but it got so repetitive. Right. Too many cannon shots. Um, but cabin in the woods. Uh, so how do you feel? Uh, you know, the last couple times we did movies that we could uh, poke fun at, and this movie kind of pokes fun at it. At uh, itself. At itself. <laughs> yeah. Um. So how, how's it, no, how's it feel commentary wise for you? Well, no, I mean, it's, it's self-aware, you know, it, that's a totally different ball game than something that's inadvertently <laughs> funny. <laughs> this also doesn't seem, you know, cocaine fueled like the others. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to scare you to death. If you want something done, right. <laughs> <laughs> you do you make misery <laughs> if you want to do a cocaine movie here's the maximum overdrive right it's just the the boringness of the ritual mm-hmm the, you know the yeah the the bureaucratic manner that the, the Bradley Whitford and Powell. Uh, <laughs> and now the slasher starts. Right. Uh, I don't know what genre. The movie, well, I guess zombie movie, right? Right. Although if you were gambling, I guess it would have to be more specific. Well, and zombies don't usually use tools. Yeah. That's, uh, Land, no. What was the one with Bub? Da Day of the Dead? Yeah, that's Day of the Dead. I mean, it depends on your idea of a zombie. Because in a more voodoo tradition, I guess they could use tools, potentially. Zombie redneck torture family. Yeah, that's pretty good interpretation of what this is. Oh, the angry dog. <laughs> the angry, angry dog, dog. Angry dog does not like the cabin in the woods. Not enough dogs. Cut. And then... The screen is splatted with blood. And they pray. What is it with uh, us watching uh, Bradley Whitford having to do these rituals? <laughs> <laughs> he never really enjoys it. Well, he, I don't, I don't, no, know, he, he doesn't. He well, finds his time know, he to enjoy himself, here. but what? Maybe he is here, but... <laughs> Compared to at least Handmaid's Tale. Well, I mean, like, dur even during the prayer and this, he's like, oh, my fucking God. Let it be over. Let's yeah. Let's get back to the, the gambling well, and, the, and the jokes. Yeah, that's the part of his job that he likes. He's like, let's get this over with because I'm going to liberate my cabinets this weekend. What is he reading? Little Nemo, I think. Is that what that said? <laughs> yeah, that but what is that? That's my question. It said Little Nemo, but what is that? I don't know. Uh, maybe <laughs> is that a maybe Finding story? Nemo is based off something. Is that a philosophy book? I don't know. A 
children's philosophy book. <laughs> you think I'm a puppet? <laughs> See, Shaggy knew what was up. <laughs> People never gave Shaggy credit. He he knew. Uh, government was... conspiracy. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> government conspiracy. There was a book called Little Nemo. Uh that's supposed to be a comic strip a very popular comic strip mm -hmm. so i thought about a graphic novel because that kind of just looking at the size of it yeah and that would make sense that he's talking to a comic book character a graphic novel character like that right And you just sort of see that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I find myself possibly watching the movie a lot. Yeah. But you knew what you were getting into when you go to a commentary episode, dear listener. I, I don't know. I don't know who talks through the entire time. Well, I mean, we don't talk through the entire time. We do sometimes. There's just... depends on how high we are. <laughs> No edibles tonight. That's no, some good practical uh, effects, you know, with the head and. Oh yeah, the effects in this are good. I really like the effects and the makeup that they have, because it is much more practical. That always looks better to me. Yeah. Yeah. Too much fake blood splatters, like a. Roger Rabbit after a while. Yeah. It's just pressing all kinds of buttons. <laughs> you know, why do you split up? Because of drugs. It's like the MK. This is what happened with the MK Ultra program. It was developed. Uh, yeah. It was developed to be able to control people. To do this sacrifice. Yeah. Or it's a smaller part of that. It's the. Yeah. It at least serves that purpose. Yeah. Oh, and uh huh. Now he finds dun 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 microphone camera. That's not good. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> And, you know, this uh, <laughs> this could have been a... I, I feel like there's probably somewhere a horror movie where it's somebody doing this just for the movie. Not, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to get that shot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. I, I feel like all the jump scares are earned in this movie. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's really dark. I remember that one time I had it. The... I love that as his bong comes in handy. <laughs> and he's using it to fight the the zombie. Of course. It's, it's like the... <laughs> I mean, it's like Jamie Lee Curtis using the knitting needles against Michael Myers <laughs> in Halloween. Use what you have and use what you know. <laughs> the, tool, the tool that's with you. I mean, didn't stop the zombie here, but it slowed him down for a second. Yep, gave you a fighting chance. <laughs> and another lever is pulled and we once again refill the blood of the fool I don't know how long it took me to, re to uh, recognize that Mordecai refers to all the people as the characters they are in the engravings Yeah. <laughs> oh, I think we're getting ready to... I don't know. Never mind. It'll pretty soon, the what, Chekhov's uh, BMX bike. Or, uh, right. <laughs> Chekhov's moped. Right. Exactly. That basement not looking so good now, is it? No. <laughs> that would be a really weird first weekend hanging out with somebody. That's true. I mean, if you did make it. <laughs> Consider how... This is the black room. Which one? Don't crack up on me. We're gonna get through this. Use some weapon, like find some weapons to take with you. While you're finding a way out. That's all I gotta say. It's what she should have been doing. But now... There you are. Stuck in a bear trap. On a chain, I think. Yeah, but... Yeah. Yeah, get rid of it. Get rid of it! Got a double tap. Sometimes triple. Yeah. Or if it's, you know, that, that knitting needle that we were talking about a whole yeah. lot of times. Yeah, that's true. Because I'll tell you, even when you get bigger knitting needles... They aren't necessarily as sharp as the small ones. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's a little uh, bit of information. What are those big knitting needles for? The ones that are thick like drumsticks. Um, you can knit blankets with them. Oh. Very easily. I've made baby blankets like that. Yeah, they're like size they're they're like size fifty. Oh, the kids. Are 
over in Japan. The evil is defeated. Yay! <laughs> Lives in a happy frog. I love the kids. Like... <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot this this always just cracked me up. <laughs> this whole reaction to the kids. <laughs> you fucking you got <laughs> Yeah. Nine year olds nine defeat year olds. them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The happy frog. I'm still a bit to just they just made me giggle. We need more little happy frogs. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> he's, he's just got to race, race against time. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. I know, he's just got to, like, patch whatever, all this different stuff in. It reminds me of the uh, old school switchboard that they have like in Black Christmas <laughs> for the telephone call. Oh, right. <laughs> Where he's like running down the hall. <laughs> Where he's trying to put the trays on the phone. <laughs> it was so close. But... So did your dog so... learn, to, learn to speak and just started yelling in the hallway? I don't know what that was. Not my dog. My hall's dog. Your hall, yeah. Your your floor's dog. The dog that lives on it, your floor. I don't think the dog... I don't even know if the dog lives there. I only hear it occasionally. Hmm. So... I don't know. Would you would you try to jump that in in a motorbike in this situation? That's totally hypothetical. So you can go with your first um, answer. No. No. Would you try to go back but find your way out on the motorbike through the woods or the water? Your That's water rough usually to goes say. somewhere. <laughs> the, yeah. You're more likely to go somewhere with the water. Although, if I had to be in the water, I can't swim. Oh, I can be... float. I can float. I mean, I can do the backstroke. I just, you know. And if I had a boat, and if I had like a canoe, I could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But if there was room for me to walk alongside the river, that would be ideal. There you go. Or whatever body of water. Like, that's the best way to go, in my opinion. Oh, he's going to get Hunger <laughs> evil Games. Can evil can <laughs> evil. Evil can evil.
Yep, puppeteers. Dun dun dun. Of course, of course, Marty was right. See, nobody ever listened to Shaggy. <laughs> and he has no Scooby here. Right? That's why he got taken out like he did. You know, that bong trick would have worked if Scooby had been with him. That would have fully wiped out the zombie right away. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, trip them, uh, trip over them backwards. Right. And they could have taken out probably a couple other zombies in the process, just by pure hijinks alone. Oops, they never didn't check the back seat. You should always do that. Total rookie mistake. Have you never been to a ritual sacrifice before? <laughs> you always have to check the back seat. No, oh, I mean, you know, serial killers and shit, you know. How many as times? a single as a single woman, you really got to think about those kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. I'm so paranoid. I am so paranoid. <laughs> uh, I mean, I love that they're breaking out the beers and the cooler. Yep, they're selling. The virgin's death. Yeah. The main thing is she suffers. <laughs> oh, he, he almost got it t introspective. Got to get some tequila. The important things in life. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've, I've talked about this before, but I spent a uh, a night with a friend who they drank too much tequila, and that put me off tequila for a really, really long time. Yeah. I don't even think I had any tequila that night. It was just such a shitty night that I was like, oh. <laughs> And I always think it tastes like butter anyway. It might be because I drank drank cheap tequila because I was broke when I drank tequila. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's one thing I've learned to appreciate as I've gotten older is uh, better, you know, I'll spend that little extra money on uh, some better tequila. doesn't have to be top shelf, but at least better. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be cheap tequila. It's not worth it. It's really not worth it. So, yeah. Other than a random margarita, I probably haven't had any tequila in 10 years. Yeah. Whereas I'm staring at a bottle right now. <laughs> <laughs> Would have been cooler with a mermaid. <laughs> they they're like having like, like the full on office party, and except you have the one guy standing in the back who's not celebrating yet because the girl is still alive, and he's saying, "Well, they haven't finished their job." Right.
the red phone. Dun, 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 dun. It's Commissioner Gordon. <laughs> it's like, oh, holy, we're fucked, Batman. Yep. <laughs> Dun dun dun. Yeah, isn't the uh, stoner mm. guy still alive? Isn't the stoner guy still alive? He sure fucking is. Yeah, I thought so. But the tension is great. But the tension is great, yeah. But since you'd better have watched this movie, person, that's not you or me, before now. Right. I don't want to spoil it Sorry, for I you. Sorry, I just spoiled it already. But, yeah, Ed the bong is in it again. Oh, I forgot about, forgot it was the bong that got him. <laughs> yeah. But I still... Can't. If Scooby had been there, it would have been taken care of quicker. Oh, yeah. Because of hijinks. See, he's still not dead. Some good, tense music. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so he's <laughs> I love that <laughs> I just remember that guy with a trowel what have you been up to <laughs> exactly Zora I wouldn't need a trowel, says Zora. Yeah. You figured it out? Nope. I know not everything. <laughs> Which, you know, at least I, what I do appreciate about this is that you have a character who's like, Okay, see, yeah, you, you people said I was crazy, but yeah, I ended up, I know a lot, but I don't know everything. <laughs> you know, because you see in other movies where you have the character, where like in Scream, the Randy character, who they aren't listening to, but who's right, you know what I mean? Mm. But he, he has a sen certain sense of hubris and doesn't admit that he doesn't know everything certain rules <laughs> fucking zombie arm but, uh, which, which of these uh, upcoming characters do you wish was the uh, alternate reality villain in this movie um Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll just have to. Say, yeah, say I have to see, see them. them. I have to see. There are quite a lot. The alternate villain. Yeah, they, it, it it would have been a different type of movie, but with the same premise. You know, yeah. depending on what they what they had summoned from the the basement of doom. Um, right. Oh, that's right. like a werewolf or something yeah yeah a werewolf i'm not yeah i've never been a big werewolf person the weird mist 
Yeah. The ghostly mist. That's a pretty freaky ghost. Yeah. Especially for computer effects at that time. <laughs> uh huh. I, I probably would have got not <laughs> really enjoyed <laughs> one with this just because, I don't know, maybe. Maybe a graphic novel or something instead. Or some sort of animation. the blade head yeah it yeah <laughs> the cylindrical box and you're right he no it. he looks like he looks a little like michael berryman way okay, younger yeah. You could see like a cousin of. <laughs> that is. Hopefully, uh, Willy Wonka didn't design that glass elevator, but look at all those fucking. You know, black, like glass squares. That sucks. They're probably just drunk enough for this to be. I extra love. Hard. I love that. I love that when they're like, "Oh, put the chemicals in there," and they're like, "He's so he's been smoking so much for so many years, he's immune to it, or whatever <laughs> they say." I don't know how long I would have hidden the elevator before trying to find a floor. That's such a, yeah. <laughs> Get the trowel, Marty. Get Good the work, trowel. zombie, zombie arm. <laughs> The zombie oh, arm just goes off with the guy. <laughs> zombie redneck torture family. I love when she does voiceovers. I don't know if she does it a lot, but seen a lot of finding dory in my time and she does a voice in that oh does she and she plays like the announcer at the sea world type place i am not familiar yes yeah you, know, you know i live with a lovely demonic five-year-old who was once a three-year-old which was when he watched a lot of stuff like that now it's all star wars and godzilla movies and that's fine that's cool yeah that's cool <laughs> yeah although he was talking about the send a letter to daddy movie again yay <laughs> <laughs> he wants to watch it again but he when he asked it was coming up on midnight and he hadn't gotten to sleep yet. I was like, I'm not putting on fucking a two do a two hour movie. Yeah, like sorry about your luck, dude. You're just gonna have to go to sleep. And I feel like some parts of the 70s 
setup of this complex, the, the underground yeah. raccoon city or whatever, you know, um, mm -hmm. the hive. Uh, some of the technology looks a lot newer than some of the other technology, like the stuff in Mission Control. Some of it looked like old school knobs. Right. And then there's this high, yeah. higher tech stuff down here. Yeah. Well, it might be like they've also been using some, you know, recycled things in part of the building. Yeah. But... And I would say, you know, <laughs> I would say they've got, they've obviously got a military here, but they could easily yeah. be Blackwater or something similar. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're working with the government. At least occasionally. Yeah. Oh, there's Bladehead. And... But I, I think I would have liked to have seen the giant scorpion more than the big snake if i had to pick between the two agreed um. <laughs> yeah, although it seems to be screaming a lot it yeah. seems to be screaming <laughs> which you know i find creative although yeah i i kind of think a whole movie of the um, oh no, was it the the ghost? Probably would have got old because it just seemed yeah. to be a just a violent ghost, not a creepy haunted yeah. house ghost. Yeah, agreed. Everything's going to shit. There's the creepy ballerina girl. Yeah, the clown. Uh, of course, there's got to be a clown. <laughs> clown. I think okay. There's be a... Lights going out. Lights going out on mission control, and they're about to. Giant bat like dragon thing. And so much blood. <laughs> that had to... And vomit and ooze and just all kinds of. Must have sucked for Because the... there's a lot of vomit in here, too, if you have noticed. Many fluids. One of those little screens entirely, when they had the multiple, um, like, TV monitor set up mm. of different, like, movies playing out, was just, like, someone repeatedly vomiting on someone else. <laughs> oh, and yeah, the... Just the little labels that there are on the walls. It's very, mm -hmm. you know, like the ones in administration. Uh, the clown. The, uni uh, the, uh, the unicorn. unicorn. That would have been an, a, a better short than a full length movie. Yeah. The murder unicorn. And there's whatever the girl that writes about husband bulges and the Lizzie or I forget what her name was. The girl that wrote the diary that uh, invoked them, right? Yeah, I forget. Uh... <laughs> Bradley Whitford maybe worked his way up from security. How could they? Hmm? Of course, this was always going to go wrong at some point. Oh yeah. I mean, they have how, how did many they cities doing think... it? Right. You know, just to get one good take. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. The uh, 
merman. creature. <laughs> the merman. He had the cock right there in his hands. It's an ugly merman. Yes. And what was that giant octopus, you think? Something like that. And karma that she ends up accidentally stabbing him. Even weirder. Yep. Like, why, why, why would I need to kill him? Exactly. I don't know. I. Would... <laughs> I might. I might be flipping out here uh, at this point. If I'm. I. If I'm going to be honest. Well, I, I'm not really sure. I I vary when I when under extreme pressure. Depends on the situation. I'm pretty calm when it's a life and death kind of situation. The few times I've been in them, like where I, or where I've been in extreme stress like that, mm. and. Um, I, you know, I was pretty calm. <laughs> I freaked out later. I freaked well, yeah. out later. As, as you do, as you do. Yeah. Um, but I've been in, unfortunately, a few situations where I keep, I, I'm the, I'm the composed one somehow. Yeah. I'm not saying I would be, but I'd like to think I would maintain that. I, but even I know. In I'm sure my head there would still be part of me that would be like oh fuck what what the hell <laughs> That's... Um... yeah. Just, I forgot she was in this. Oh, did you? Yeah. Like I couldn't remember the 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 actor that was in the role. I knew the I knew like the just like the story and everything. It was just I couldn't remember some of the cast. Yeah, I think last time I watched this, I bought uh death and the maiden yeah i haven't seen that forever i still haven't since i know but you know yeah i haven't seen that in a while either i think it's out of print in the states or at least i can yeah. find like a korean or french copy <laughs> I should probably check and see when that's supposed to come. Oh, the ground's shaking. I think that's where <laughs> it could have completely diverged because I was tempted to suggest doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, what a, the, this is the end or whatever. Yeah. Seth Rogen. Everybody. Apocalypse. Right. Danny McBride apocalypse movie. This sticks closer to the horror type tradition of this pig. Yeah, that's true. Oh, 
shit. Let's see what kind of friends you were. I don't know if I could be that selfless. Probably. I don't, but I know. don't know. I don't know. You know? I don't know. I know that's kind of a cliche thing to say, but. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But it doesn't matter. Right. I hope she gets talked about as a final girl sometimes because I, I I don't know why uh, I just thought of that and I know it's not an original thought but yeah oh the Buckner kid yeah. Down into the abyss. Now what, Marty? It's a weird room. Yeah. This is where if the movie was in the 80s it would be a cigarette that they're getting ready to pull out or pulp fiction yeah yeah <laughs> so, much so much blood though yeah, blood, though, yeah. I shot, I shot marty in the face <laughs> It has that look of yeah. <laughs> and me in a in a Uma Thurman after she had the whole like oh. shot and everything and she OD'd. Uh, the twenty twenty version oh there we go. Yeah. The yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It would have sucked if it was a lower budget movie to be covered in that much fake blood. Right. Speaking of Evil Dead. And here they do have their cigarette. Yep. One of Marty's joints. Or is it a joint or a cigarette? I think it's a joint. It looks oh. like uh, the thing that he was rolling up and filling on the drive there. Oh, okay. That would make more sense, but... He's, he's smoking it like it's like that, too. I feel like... Uh, the, I know it's, it's not a universal hand positioning, but... Right. Well, earlier he was smoking joints like joints. Yeah. But he wasn't smoking cigarettes. Now, though, it looked like he was smoking a cigarette. That's why. Because he was holding it differently. That's why. And the shape was a little different than what he did earlier. Hmm. Oh, shit. And, and there it is. The Cabin in the Woods. You've watched Cabin in the Woods with Darren and Vanessa. Um, yeah. 
that's a that's a fun movie. That's a popcorn movie. That's I don't know. How how do you feel uh, doing doing the commentary on a movie that we don't make fun of? I'm not sure how I feel. About <laughs> no, I like watching I mean, good I, movies I, though, but I do too. I do too. But it's I mean I I was gonna say the last time, I mean, we do usually do commentaries of movies that we're making at least a little bit of fun of. And this is just, so, you know, makes so much, you know, it's so self-aware and does it for you. Yeah. Beat, pretty much. You to the punch. Yeah. That's what's different about it. It's not that I didn't enjoy it. I mean, and I do enjoy it, but, uh, yeah, it makes for definitely a different kind of commentary, but, um, no, I still like chatting about this because it's a good movie. It's a good movie. And I'm glad, I mean, that you've seen it as many times as you have. I'm sure I watch this at least once a year. And it's an easy one, like I said, to throw on in the background when you're doing something, uh, especially after you've seen it, you know. Yeah. It's one of those that you can look away from, come back to, you know where you are. And yeah. At, at least for me, you know. I, yeah. I, yeah. I haven't really heard a lot of people say anything negative about it, but is this when you want to announce what we're doing for Pride? Or are you not sure? Well, well first I was going to say, well, let's go ahead and take a quick break and then we will come back to cuz I um have a book giveaway. Okay. To announce, and then we are going to announce what we're going to be doing for our Pride episode. Okay? So, on that note, we shall take a break and be back in a moment. I am never going to see a merman. Ever. Two would be thankful. Those things are terrifying. The cleanup on them is a nightmare. Okay. Now we are back just for a quick moment. Um, so now I have as a book giveaway, not just one book or two books or three, four, five, six, but I have six books <laughs> all in a set. They are the first, um, part of the Scott Pilgrim versus the world, uh, graphic novels. And they're hardback. So... If anybody's interested, please um, get in touch with us. Um, trying to think what's best. Email? What do we check the uh, most? Probably I mean, email. Either the email or, you know, direct message. But, uh, yeah. You know, you either know one of us or uh, on our Instagram or Twitter. But, yeah, you can email us at um, vdclinicpod at gmail.com um, get to us by I'm trying to think fair date by mm, June 6th <laughs> sure <laughs> June 6th a random date um, and um, yeah we'll announce it on our pride episode and Speaking of our Pride episode, um, we have a couple selections for you for this year. Um, the 2017 biopic, Tom of Finland. How do you pronounce that? Tom of Finland. Okay. It's the, uh, it's biopic of the artist, the homoerotic artist known as Tom of Finland. Yes, and I'm going to make you read some subtitles and, you know, we're going into some more Scandinavian language here. <laughs> so, it's actually streaming on Hulu right now. Good to know. If, in case, any, in case anyone is interested. That. And then, for our reading selection, I have chosen the... Be kind. Uh, I don't have a lot of reading time. Be kind. I I am. I totally am. The manga, um, My Lesbian Experience with Loneliness. 
I know you said you'd been wanting to do some more graphic novel type stuff in, in this year. And, um, I know, I think I, I think I meant brought this up on a referral slip, but we, I didn't go that into it. So, um, yeah. So, and I knew it would fit in with your reading time. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I know, I know you're short on it because of the quarantine right now. So a lot of people are two different selections there and, um, both kind of an artwork kind of visual theme, um, going. So anything you have to plug for, um, on your front, what's going on outside of this world? Well, let's see over on psycho semantic. I don't want to announce any episodes. I think I'm going to be recording because I think the only time that I've said that without having already recorded it, something happened and it fell through. But, uh, at the beginning of May, uh, did a thing with the documentary Hail Satan. Got that summer podcast under the stairs, uh, top 10 of the, however you call it, 2000, the aughts. Yeah. The aughts. Um, uh, that'll be coming up also in the summertime. And yeah, just living the quarantine life. Uh, <laughs> growing a really stupid beard because I don't have a you know, fancy mask <laughs> that requires the lack of facial hair. So since I'm just mostly around two people, but anyway, I have realized that I am finally <laughs> high enough to say <laughs> goodbye. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, well, anyway, the VD clinic pod at all your favorite social medias. Do you have yeah, any, drop I, us didn't, a line. I didn't ask you if you've got anything coming up. No, I don't actually. <laughs> I'm boring right now. That's okay. Um, it happens sometimes. Um, oh, but the is anger. It? So that's yeah. our cue. <laughs> I guess that is the cue to get off the line. But um, yeah, another year down, and we have some things I, I think in the works that may be interesting and. God only knows what we'll come up with uh, during quarantine. <laughs> we could get loopy. We could get loopy, loopier than usual. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the key here, I think. But um, yeah. Anyway, um, I I guess that's it for me for tonight. Thank you for Darren for another year. Of hijinks. <laughs> Fun times. And yes. Thank you and to the listeners course. for another year. We appreciate you. Talk to you soon. Bye. VD is for everybody. Darling, have no If you're curious or confused, get information or a pamphlet at most pharmacies or a health clinic. If you need help, see a doctor. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. 
horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.